Cause I'm soy sauce coming from my jaws. You annoyed and the pain sucking. Even if you're angry, I'ma give you a big hug. When I blow up, fire in the night sky. Couldn't be cuter if I wore a white bow tie. That's no lie. Getting married to the league. Put a tux on my body. Break out the fancy sheets. I reminisce about the day that I spread a wings. Chilling in my sack, kicking back with some onion rings. My homie show waiting outside, wondering. Got a bit excited, broke my shell with a tail swing. All the other chumps. What up, people? It's a Tuesday night. We got some league action. We got some Noxus Division games going on. We have two teams here that uh, both went 0-2 in their first match of the season. So we're going to see if we can get one of these teams a win. Or maybe both teams a win. We'll see how it goes. Pick Bay and I already started. This is the Noxus Vision. So we have uh, Imagine Ocean. No, the Ocean team. Right? Imagine it's got four teams in the uh, league. And uh, this is the Ocean. Ocean guys are coming in here. And we have Pick Band starting. And on the other side, we have the Dandelion Knights. So pretty much everyone is... Uh, uh, all these people have been in the community for a while on one team or another. So you'll see a lot of friendly f names coming at you tonight. So we get everything moved around. And pick bands already started. Olaf set. <sighs> Nothing too in particular. So I've got the sheet pulled up here from last week. Seeing what they played. Uh, does look like uh, Dead Teddy is going to be sitting on the bench this time for Ocean. And we have Lagos in here. He'll be running. It looks like support for Ocean. So they do have a six-man roster think probably to help with scheduling make it a little bit easier for all the teams to uh, get everyone in here so kind of sort of check it on out so pick band slowly progressing here hopefully everyone's had a good Tuesday we're just gonna have a sort of chillax stream here we have Wukong, Kled, Olaf bands looking for a lot of bruiser fights coming out of the side of ocean bands get rid of all those champions with set Malzahar and Elise sent out on site of TDK uh, interesting, the Elise ban. Uh, I guess Strom did, or uh, Storm, not Strom, Storm, did run it uh, last week. Did run it in week one. Uh, so that must have been pretty popular. Uh, get rid of that. There's Tristana, now TDK ran that in week one. So starting to take picks away from each other. Probably a Jin coming out. Leona Jin. Maybe Leona Kaisa. I don't know, whatever they want to run here. Uh, I'm going to go Jin. I'm going to say Jin. He played Jin last week. Uh, AD carry Lord Boomerus did play Jin and Tristana. So let's see the Jin. Yeah, baby. And I was right. Bingo, bongo. Let's keep it going. Okay, so you're going to counterpick the Leona. I, th I mean, what? You go Alistar here? I mean, Leagos is much more of a, what? Engaged player. Maybe Pike? Nah. Thresh? Thresh hook? You know, I'm going to go Thresh. We're going to say Thresh here, unless it's the jungler, at which uh, Storm picks. Oh, my gosh, Thresh. Well, yeah. Okay, so now you go jungler here. Ocean, got to pick jungle. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of champion overlap between the two of them. Olaf and Wukong are banned. Set's banned. Do you just take Z I mean, he took Zack last time. I think, I know, maybe you go top lane, Hecarim, Hecarim, nope, you went Zach. No! Got that one wrong. Great, so, uh, okay, so what do we, what do we, uh, what do we go with now? Your TDK, you probably pick your jungle, unless you want to pick something before you go to pick ban. If you want to go aggressive, you go Zin Zhao, trying to double C, Vi maybe, Vi, Pantheon, Pantheon's not banned. I can see Pantheon pick coming out for DK. They're going to pick Pant... Nope. No. Crud. Okay, so I'm not doing so game. So game, so good with the game of pick the champions as we have bands coming out. We're just going to see some top... TDK is going to get rid of top laners. Uh, if I'm uh, Ocean, I'd probably just focus in on either mid picks you don't want to see or jungle picks. They've already banned two junglers. Might as well just, you know, thro keep throwing more bands at Infinity Blades. Uh, I could see like a Vi Pantheon bands coming out. And if you're trying to ban out the mid laner on the side of Ocean, I mean, the problem is TDK will swap their mid and support 
players, so uh, that could uh, you know get everything all in a tizzy when that occurs. Uh, quacks. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you want to ban. So I mean, they got rid of the Scion and the Silas. Smurp to perp. Smurb to perp. Smurb to perp. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna butcher that name the entire night. Uh, particularly about what's he running. I mean, they got rid of the Silas. The set is already banned. Uh, Scion. I mean, he's going to probably well play Renekton into the Orn. So if you're TDK, you want to pick your jungle here. Uh, I think we already decided. I think, it's, I think it decided Pantheon or Vi. Pantheon or Vi. We'll go Vi. TDK is going to pick Vi. Come on. Kha'Zix. Dang it. <coughs> Not very good here. Uh, okay. I'm Ocean. What do I pick? I have good, you know, long... Engage, some CC. Uh, probably need just like a control mage. What control mage is if I'm Ocean? What am I running here? Uh, Quax is the one account that never freaking loads on OPG.GG. Uh, he can pretty much place York top. Okay, did not see coming that coming at all. And Galio. Okay, Galio is a nice combo with the Zac uh, and the Thresh. So we got one Mega Carry. Uh, split pusher, long engage, long counter engage, good CC overall. So a nice like 3-1 comp coming out of uh, Ocean with Galio kind of being like a, uh, it's more like a, a 1-3.5 uh, with the long engage. And Seraphine coming out. So uh, Seraphine is run by the mid laner on the side of Dandelion Knights uh, Notego. But he ran it in the support position in week one. So uh, we'll see if he runs Seraphine in mid lane. I mean, do you have... Okay, Seraphine mid lane. There we go. We can see that happen. We can get it done. Okay. Let's see what, let's see what they do here. I haven't seen a Seraphine in mid lane yet. I think the Seraphine and Olaf, Ol, not Olaf, Ornolts on top of each other. Those, it's going to be some interesting. It's very kind of linear, though. But we'll see if that uh, the linear action is really, uh, really good for this. I don't know. Kha'Zix could be able to get some... Let's see here. Where's Kha'Zix going to go? Kha'Zix top. Orn into Yorick. I mean, Orn technically can break down Yorick wall. That's neat. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting interaction. See how that goes. I don't think we'll see if uh, we get to do... I mean, if I Kha'Zix, can Seraphine lock up the Galio for you to come in and get kill? Bot lane, Leona Jin is a lot of great CC, but you're going into Thresh, Tristana. And if, you know, Thresh is on point with the hooks, the flays, and the lantern, Tristana does have an escape. Get it could be hard to uh, engage plays on. I think it's kind of like it's the outplay is in there, opportunity for uh, Ocean to outplay and win the bot lane. Uh, but I think uh, TDK's bot lane early game is a little bit more easier to run. In the mid game, once you have those really long range Zac engages, it can be really nice, especially if Zac can get into the back line, followed with Galio right on top. He just comes in, you know, drops down on top of everyone. And then at that point, Jin is kind of left out. Then Kha'Zix is just the one isolating, trying to kill the Tristana. So it's basically we like can Tristana kill or can Tristana can Kha'Zix kill Tristana or can everyone else kill Jin? Because this is a very like low damage lineup, depending on how much actual uh, damage the Seraphine goes, if she goes the damage route or if she goes the supportive mid lane route. I expect the supportive route uh, coming out on the side of the Seraphine particularly for the mid lane. So that means, I mean, you have a tank CC top lane that's really nice, especially for the team comps. And it's more, that's also another 4-1 comp. Uh, look, they're looking to get picks. The long range pick potential on the side of TEK is really good, uh, particularly around objectives, trying to get to them. 
if they have if they don't have if they have the vision set up properly if they don't have the vision the long range so there's the long range cc from tdk but the long range engage from zach gallio uh is really particularly strong thresh can you know get some nice kind of like hook over a wall as well and tristana eventually will have the longest range in the game to you know counteract anything that comes in thresh is gonna have to do du double duty either like you know land some good hooks or flays whenever you know the Kha'Zix jumps in to do the assassination kill, but it's kind of all up to them. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I think, uh, I mean, York versus Orn top lane is just, that's going to be a snooze fest. Kha'Zix is going to want to try and get a nice clear, uh, you know, up. I don't know. How, how high up does Kha'Zix need to go? Does he need to get to level 6 now? I mean, he can gank, like, what, level 4? I mean, he definitely needs all of his abilities, so he's definitely, like, a level 3 ganker. If he can set up top lane with the CC and bot lane with the CC, I guess he could try and do mid lane, but I think uh, it's going to pretty much bounce out in mid lane. Just clear the minions. Control, mage. I mean, Jin may be very impossible to kill in the late game, Considering that you're going to have, you know, Leona with CC for any engage onto it. And then Seraphine with the, the heals and shields and all the buffs that she's going to be producing to keep Jin alive. And then do you just have another Orn? So if you say maybe Orn is the counter engage, Leona is your engage, and Seraphine's your peel. And you just run like a three protect the one and then Kha'Zix your uh, solo duty. Your solo, uh, like I said, kill the Tristana. That 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 can work. It, We'll see how the dragons play out as well. We'll see if uh, one dragon, you know, really gets involved in, or if it's like a back and forth. Uh, Zach's probably a little bit slower on the clear, clear, but I haven't seen I haven't seen any very many Kha'Zix recently. Uh, but you know, it, it's what he's comfortable on. So we are going to real quick break it down with chat here a little bit. Hope everyone's having a good night. Um, don't forget to follow the Twitch channel. Go to the YouTube. Uh, this season, we're going to be trying to do a better job of getting our VODs up there quickly. If there are highlight plays that you want to see, uh, absolutely great. I mean, this season, we've already had a ridiculous two-minute long uh, fight, a pentakill, and a superb NAR ultimate uh, last night. Uh, those highlights already thrown up on the YouTube under the highlights playlist. If you want to look at any season, uh, you can look for, uh, you know, the season's playlist as well over on the YouTube channel and you can watch pretty much any, all the, almost every match we've streamed, unless there's technical problems, we've tried to get that over to the YouTube. Like I said, this season we're going to be trying a better job of getting highlights and, uh, regular seasons going on. Uh, the the usual uh, let's see here savage this is season five so we had season zero one two three four and now we are in season five this is week two last day of week two uh, going in and this is the noxus division so it's, noxus is usually a an average gold division depending so every every player's there's a, a little bit of range on the teams here so uh, in a few minutes, we'll be, you know, definitely breaking down the uh, the team comps and everything, and all the all the players. We'll hit their names up. So solo kiss tonight. Uh, yeah, make sure all you everyone's uh, getting into uh, the Discord and inviting the players and the peoples to come hang out with us. Make sure you've done your matches scheduled your week three matches that should have been done a while ago if not uh let people know there and play it on out and we will get those games going for week three i'm excited week three i think Sh sharima division has off so one less uh division with games but maybe a better opportunity for some of those sharima players to jump on to the cast they can give their highlights of all the other divisions from ionia all the way down to demacia and what goes on so we are in the spectator delay and it is uh three minutes man three minutes spectator delay is one of my most favorite things in the entire world because it's just the time that i get to spend with you
Okay, that was enough. <laughs> enough sappiness. 45 seconds. Uh, if you want uh, Ocean to win, go ahead and, you know, I guess they're imid Imagine, but I'm going to try very hard this season not to do the Imagination song from South Park for one of these Imagine teams because there's four of them. But one of these nights, I'm just going to, I'm going to lose my mind and I'm just going to start doing it because my voice can probably hit all of those notes just like the kids. <laughs> uh, we're going to cut to the, uh, to the transition here. Come on, Streamlabs. Come on, you worked for me last night. Oh. Boo. Okay, so on the side of Ocean, we have Smurb to Perp up on top lane with the Meowick. Uh, Storm on the Pool Party Zack in the jungle. Quax is playing Infernal Galio in the mid lane. Scattercat is on Ernest Elf, Tristana, AD Kiri, and Liagos 2000 is on Championship Thresh. On the side of the Dandelion Knights, or TDK, we have Mystic Wave playing Orn in the top lane, Infinity Blades playing Kha'Zix in the jungle, running Smite Ghost. Ghost on the Kha'Zix. We'll see if that plays into effect. On the side of Notiegro, he's playing the Seraphine KDA skin in the mid lane. Load Boomerus here is playing Jin AD Carry, and Fizz mid please is playing Support Leona, and we stuck. I wonder if there's a pause. I wonder if there's a pause right when we got in this because I loaded in with zero on the board. Okay. Delay. Why is the game capture not going? This is really annoying. Game capture. Why are you not capturing the game? Well, there's some flashes blown. Seraphine flash blown and Thresh flash blown. Now, flat, Thresh is running flash heal. Tristan is running flash uh, cleanse. So we're just going to let this run. Shadow! What am I doing? Auto capture. Super! Thanks, Shadow! Once again, that's Shadow, everyone, helping me try and figure out this VOD because, you know, it, it's not hard enough that the client is terrible sometimes, but the fact that uh, Streamlabs just is not being my friend makes this a little bit difficult. So, as you can see, I said the Kha'Zix on the Smite Ghost, and he's going for a full clear here, and, uh, yeah, so... We got laning phase, everyone. Hooray! So we'll probably either be following the junglers around or the top laners. Probably the top laners because we like to watch little kitty cats play. They're so cute. Meowing around the map. As uh, It's also a shovel. A spade. Pooper scooper. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever is used to uh, summon the kitty cats for the... Uh, 
for for the meow work. Oh, that's the see meow york. I can't get the proper now, so it's because good to get meow kai. That one's really easy. They roll rolls off the tongue, but the meow work is just doesn't quite doesn't quite fit under my vocabulary. So Tristana already at like half health. Wonder if they took a bad combo down here. And actually, Flash Ignite is down by Leona. So, and Cleanse down and Potion. So when we were looking at something, something crazy happened. Kha'Zix maybe doing a lane gank? Not sure. Oh, the Kitty Cat. See, that's the problem with uh, Orn is you can go into Mal Ka Kha'Zix is going to leap in here to do nothing. Uh, Orn could just like headbutt the wall and just crush it, right? And then it's done. It's gone for. It's done so. So, you know, and it still gets the knockup. So, Orn into the uh, the York is actually a pretty good counter. I wonder if uh, they knew he would be going this champion, so preemptively picked it. As we see, going for the double scuttle crab as, you know, Jin and Leona are taking that bottom scuttle crab as, you know, Kha'Zix takes a scop top one. York has burned all of his mana. Zack got off a nice full clear, and then, you know, other than... Krugs, Gullums, that's where he's going. He's going down there. Junglers, Tristan up in CS because Jin went and got the uh, Scuttle Crab. Good for him. Nice Thresh Hook into nothingness. Zack has been seen by Ward. Dropped Zone Pink, okay. Putting vision down for his allies. Nice job, Zach. We're just going to be chilling. Kha'Zix's going to come back for a return gank. Oof. He's popped the ghost with the jump. Oh, Kha'Zix, buddy. You're going to take two tower shots for that. So, ghost for flash. I think that's a fair trade. What's Ghost's uh, cooldown? We'll check on that, because I do not know that at the top of my head. Is he going to push in the wave? He's got uh, 190 seconds left on that uh, Ghost versus the Flash that was burnt. Uh, 280 seconds. So 100 less seconds on the uh, Ghost cooldown. So overall, better trade for the jungler. Nice job on the side of uh, Infinity Blades there. And are they doing dragon already? Or are they just clean out? Yeah, they're doing dragon right on top of it. Now they knew that the Kha'Zix was up in the top lane. Galio has walked down. Um, get, Kha'Zix hasn't backed yet. And this is just the lane pressure of Tristana. And looks like they're going to try and engage. Thresh goes in with the hook. Lanterns and It looks like we're going to have a full fight getting onto the Jinn. Tristana's going to jump over the wall. And we're going to have a full fight here. And this is a four on four. No one is level six. Yet. We have flashes coming out on the side. Thresh did body block that one. Orn has actually teleported his way down here. As Ocean is just there on the roll. They're going to jump in. It looks like this is going to be a dead Thresh. As Zach's deciding if he wants to go over the wall or not. Is choosing not to. So first blood for Dragon. Uh... I mean, it's under six-minute dragon, so that's looking really good on the side of Ocean. But York teleported, to, or not York, Orn teleported down there. The did not get a piece of that kill. No one was level six yet, so pretty uh, ballsy play, but a, a good cleanup on the side of TDK. It did get the kill over to the Jin, assists on to Kha'Zix and the Seraphine. You need to get your gold, but Tower Plate's going over the Smurf up here, so. Gold. I mean, let's just because of gold. I mean, York is going to be up uh, four thousand or uh, four hundred from that. Zach's still up two hundred. Mids uh, up a hundred. The eighty carries are the only one up three hundred, and so is the support up two hundred. So I guess you know the bottom half of the map, the Leona and Jin did come up gold positive out of that whole play. As we just see, so Zach's going to be able to get this one down. I wonder, in this game, though, do you just build, like, I mean, if Seraphine doesn't get enough damage, as York does teleport back up here with the uh, the Sheen here, and the Kindle Gem, so he's got the cooldown reduction and that ability to, you know, just crush in on the uh, the minions here. Uh, and that's going to be knocked up. Oh, there's an ult coming out on the side of York, and Zach's going to come in here for the jump of the flash out on the side of Orn, as uh, the giant, uh, you know, 
Or Maiden. Me Mjernin. I can't I can't do it. There's like a meow. There's a bit I should be able to like make a cat noise, right? Like meow and then the maiden. You should be able to combine those into something. Hopefully someone in the in the chat put type in your best like meow noise for the maiden. Like what what type of like hissing sound is she going to like make here? Is this like is she a straight like hiss or is she just like a quiet like noise? Uh, there's no way she's purring, right? I mean that's that that, that kitty cat's not a purring. As uh, York and Kha'Zix are going to run into each other. But the Maiden, once again, kind of scares everyone off. I was saying, though, if you're on the side of uh, Ocean, you, you just build armor, right? Like, armor and health. Zack is going to have, like, the easiest time. Because I don't think Seraphine's going to produce enough magic damage. As uh, they're going to fight over pink wards here. And Seraphine's gonna nope does not just get caught up in the taunt and walks through the tornado returns the own Q damage so the mid laners tickle each other with AOE magic damage and uh, York is taking blue buff now great so more spamming of Qs in the top lane this is gonna be uh, real uh, fast as a uh, no, with the help with the maiden, they'll get the push on. And spot lane's going to take out a pink ward. And the junglers are going to meet. Uh-oh, Zach. You are out. Zach's just going to leap his way on out of here. He has flash if necessary. Uh, let's see if he wants to go back in. Now, Galio is eight. Leona is six. Jin is six. Thresh is five. But he has hex tech flash. Let's see if they're just resetting the, uh, the giant scuttle crab. Shelly, right? Shelly's a scuttle crab. Susie. Savannah. I don't know. It starts with an S. Shelly, I think, is the first one, right? And then there's now that there's possibly two of them, so. The matter is, uh, the York going to try and slow push this wave here. And Leona's going to go in here, and there's the jump out and misses the ultimate on the side of Leona. And that's going to stop that engage on its point. Great buffering of that jump on the side of Scattercat. Thresh, going to block here. Trying to get a reset, maybe? I mean, it's just the boots difference in the uh, thing, so. Trying to get it set up. I mean, next dragon is in 25 seconds. Leona has burnt everything. I mean, not everything. Ultimate and E. Zach, you are not level 6, and Kha'Zix is, so not good. Now, York flashes back up, obviously. It's been time. Oh... Ooh, goes actually through the wall. Nice Q. It looks like Thresh is going to go into the bot lane. And Zach's going to come in here, but he does not have ultimate here. He's trying to slam the people together in the bonds on Tristan and make that one go explosion. Jin is going to probably open up the curtain call here after he fires off his crit shot. Kha'Zix in the wing. We'll see if there's an engage. Leona Flash has been burnt. Heal been burnt by Jin as well. Only heal burnt on the side of Thresh. As Seraphine's popped the heal cone. Galio is backed, so we're at nothing. Oh, flash hook right in, and Tristan's going to jump in here, and there's the flash on the side. Oh, my gosh, Liagos, that's not fair, my man. That is not fair. As now Thresh is going to try and body block, and it looks like Tristan is just going to straight flash from that one. Zach, you are not six. Is oh, nice flag. We'll see if one more attack and jumps in here and gets off the damage. The bomb is going to explode on the Kha'Zix. Seraphine is uh, walking her way down here. Not going to happen. Tristana going to maybe some poke on? I think it's going to be a, a, a dragon here, though. I think that's what uh, we may be looking for. There's a flash burn in the top lane as well. Sometime during all of that. Oh! Oh, uh, so you have no mana. As you, you, soon as you get enough to, like, that, that 60, 70 mana to throw out the Q and you're just backing. Uh... And they took too long to reset. Orn's walked down now. They're just going to take the dragon. It is an ocean dragon taken away from ocean dragon. Or imagine ocean. Whatever. Ocean for ocean. Right? So one dragon apiece. Pretty early. The fact that we're at 12 minutes and, you know, second dragon's already been taken. But one to one apiece. 1k gold lead, basically, on the side of Imagine. As uh, Orn walked his way down to bot lane and now is walking his way back up the top lane. 
And the fact that he's down like 20 CS and like three plates, and this is, oh, he's gonna go in with the ultimate here to clear minions. And down goes the giant kitty cat. So, Thresh did get the kill, though. So that's not particularly good on the side of the bot lane. But Tristana was able to get an assist. Is up some CS. Seraphine doing a nice job on mid lane. Only down 20. No. Or it's the only one that... Oh, I guess Tristana did finish off the Kraken Slayer. Zach maybe gonna go for the uh, the scuttle crab here. Definitely good pink ward vision on the side of Gig Zach plus Gallo can jump on in. Kazix looking down at the bot lane as Thresh and Tristana are pushed up. Now Tristana is always gonna be kind of pushing here, right? And the York with the the kitty cats can always be pushing and Gallio maybe pushing. So you know Kazix could have been a little maybe a little bit more proactive in trying to get some of these ganks in. Just kind of depends on how the lanes were setting up for him and how they were trying to push it. I think they're just going to take the Rift Herald top. I mean, Tower Plates fell, though. Zach's coming up here with Shelly. He's just going to jump and drop it in right away. Okay. They're going to try and get two. The Tristana and Thresh are going to probably be ganked by the Kha'Zix down here. So we're going to have people taking first Tower Top. We'll see if the Shelly gets another one. Leona is going to go in for an engage. Misses the E. Decides not to drop the L. Tristana and Thresh back their way up. We'll see if Shelly gets another charge in. Zach's going to go in with the jump. Slam one, slam two together. Let's see if we get another. Enough. Gets the blue smite. Go off for the brittle. I think they're just trying to get the second charge off. As Galio may be getting ganked here in the mid lane. And there's the charge. And it's going to die. Galio had the burn flash in the mid lane to escape that one. Thresh with the fall. But a little late on that on his end. Just going to clear out some vision here around the dragon pit. Tristana stayed in the bot lane. As Jin actually looked to roll mid to help with that. Can Tristana take this tower? No. He's trying, though. Okay, peeps. What's the next objective here? Dragon a minute 55. I mean, the first tower is gone. Shelly is not going to be coming back. Because Baron. Tristana maybe try and get this tower. Rotate out of there. Get Galio in a side lane. Then Tristana in the mid lane. I, th I mean, just... Are both these teams are just going to sort of handshake it, I think, for the next minute here. And then we're going to see lots of action down towards that dragon. Because York, yeah, he's uh, picked up a bunch of items. He's now, you know, he's ready, I think, to show up and play. Or not. I don't know. Maybe he'll just split push top lane forever. He may do the classic York where he's like, peace out, guys. Zach's going to go in to kill some minions here in mid. Seraphine stepping on the bubbles. How dare she? As York is going to go mid as there's a Thresher down in the bot lane. It looks like we have a teleport in. As uh, Flash and by Leona is going to try and get onto everything. Going to probably have to pop the cleanse here. Nope, Flash is first. As Thresh is going to body block absolutely everything. Trying to get everything knocked down. And down goes Thresh in the bot lane. But Seraphine drops in the mid lane at the same time. So a one for one trade as Dragon is spawning here in 25 seconds. Teleport was burnt on the side of Orn. So that's Jin ult, Leona ult, Flash ignite and Orn ult and teleport to come in while uh, Galio burnt teleport in mid. Seraphine died. Oh my gosh. And Leona is stuck here. Let's see if we can see if Zach's going to go in here. Nope. Decides not to as Tristana's walking around. So they're trying to, you know, nice damage out on the side of the ulti here. The maiden. Seraphine does have teleport. She's going to be teleporting into the bot lane. York is going to be stuck between a rock and hard place, and he's running back to his own tribush. Going to miss everything. There's the Galio ult. Going to come on in, protect York. That's not going to happen. Seraphine's going to speed everyone up. But there's no little kitty cats to charge on in on things. 
Or who are we waiting for? Tristan is here. Zach's at half health. Looks like Thresh Hook goes in onto the order. We're going to see if this can go big. And there's enough damage. No one can get over the wall. There's not enough damage. Tristan is able to get a fourth kill. Great make dance on the side of Seraphina too. But Zach's let's bounce around. He's going to knock everyone up and everything. Another hook's coming on the side of Thresh. He's going to come into the flight. He's going to follow on through. And Zach has gone to the blob form, but not enough damage is coming out physically. So it's going to bring it out. And another cage put in on the side of York. Is going to finish slapping this one? Galley has been throwing out the thing. Seraphine damage coming over. But there's another Thresh Hook as it looks like. You're going to have a you know punch away on the side of Galio is Jin and Seraphine are the only ones left alive. Same with Yorick. No mana, though. So the carries not touched on the side of TDK. Excellent job by them by scattering and able to shred them one at a time. The CC not strong enough to actually take them down. Everyone else has dropped. I think we're going to be having round two. Dragon fight coming to you. Real quick, gold check after that fight. I mean, Ocean's still up 2,000, so nothing really changed from that. I mean, Jin got the some kills. Seraphine got kills. Tristana, though, now is going to have red buff. Now he has no flash. Zach flashes up and no ultimate. York teleported down the bot lane. He can get that bot lane pushing. Or we can just fight over Infernal Drink again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Seraphine slow. She doesn't teleport this time. What is teleport? Oh, the Thresh Hook does nothing. York's going to get bot lane. That's going to go down. Jin going to maybe pandering. There's the Ornolt. He's going to get onto the four. Three-man Ornolt. Jin also comes out. It looks like he had everything been onto Zack. He's going to flash his way on out. That was the one person who still had flash. Thresh Hook is going to miss entirely. York is now going to maybe poke his way up the river. I mean, they lost the tower for Zach Flash right now. Seraphine comes out and looks like we're going to have a re-engage. And the punches come back in. And York is coming back on the side as Orn tries to pound us up. And finishes one. I don't know exactly as that. Shrutsan's trying to lay down there. the front line. And same with Jin on the other. Seraphine gets a nice four-man dance dance party going on. Everything's throwing the abilities right, left, up, down, center. Here we go. More fighting. Thresh Cage is going to come out. Zach's going to bounce around. Seraphine just sliding down to the back. And is going to jump in yet again. Let's see if we get another reset. Oh, another reset. And finish that one off. And finish that one off again. She get another one. There's a flash cue coming in by the York. And Zach's going to try and lob his way in. They're not cracking up. And Ice on the side of Yorick. Ocean gets rewarded with Infernal. And a tower. Super. I mean, that took him a while to get the dragon. Sorry about that. I needed water after that. Back-to-back uh, -back team fights. This is one of the things I absolutely love about uh, casting seal matches is there is no, like, just, like, lollygag, like, six to two kills at, like, 25 minutes. Uh, I think every team's goal is to uh, match the uh, the kill score at the, with the minute timer, right? I mean, we're at 17 to 21 here, so we're not, like, peak you know, seal, chaos, but we're getting there. We're getting there. As uh, Tristana was able to get some of those uh, resets in the, the team fight, Kha'Zix wasn't able to get any. I think he was able to get one reset to uh, to finish it up, but not entirely. And York absolutely was, you know, able to mow through because uh, Jin is only on one item right now and not enough. Seraphine actually was pumping out a lot of damage. I was impressed by how much her mid lane damage is come, just coming in for the fact that she only has the Seraphs, right? The only, only the Seraphs embrace. Let's see here. Orange should be getting ready to put in some upgradables here pretty soon. Maybe. And so that's three towers to zero, though, on the side of Ocean. That's a lot of gold, as York is a beast right now in the side lane. He's going to be getting his push on, and looks like Thresh and Tristan are jumping here. One auto takes a, almost a third of, you know, Cossack's health. Thresh hook on the minion. Leona Jin for backup. And the Maiden takes all the brunt damage here. So I just want to commend, first off, uh, Mr. Perp on his Maiden control. Uh, I know she can be a fickle fickle uh kitty cat and not always do what you want 
as uh, oh, as Flash comes in. It looks like we're gonna go in on here. Tristana gets on. Um, Galliol's gonna come in and knock everyone up. Oh, it does get two in. He's gonna jump in. Tristana's gonna jump in off on the side. As everyone's gonna fight in front of the tower. And down goes Orm. Somehow Thresh stole that one. As we're gonna follow everyone through. Everyone's just jumping in onto the same person. You know, it's like Thresh lands the hook. He's going in. Galliol's going in. Uh, Zach's jumping in. Tristana's like, I'm joining the pool party too. And everyone's, you know, because we got the pool party Zach skin and Yorick. I mean, can literally set up a little baby baby pool here is the oh they left liagos behind but not today because he's gonna hook himself into that bear pit and here we go more time in the pit bum 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 ba -da. man these great Great games. Ah, uh, enjoy. Okay, so Tristana's picked up two and a half. We got the zeal completed, so good for her. Almost that three items. As soon as she completes the zeal, I think Tristana's going to be fully online and ready to shred through the team fights if she isn't already. As uh, we have the Jin has finished off. The, uh, the Collector. What a great item, the Collector. Uh, Seraphine, still no uh, real Keystone item, but is gone for the Seraphs. Let's see here. Haven't quite got everything going. We'll see what she finished building. Galio has, mm, excuse me, got the Zonias as uh, Thresh tries to uh, flash in there here. And uh, York split pushing duties. Absolutely doing excellent work on the tower. Now, this is a great, like, 4-1 comp on the side of Ocean. Uh, they got the York on the one lane if, the, if they w really want to kind of push that one in through. And uh, and there's the Thresh Hook. Lands on a nobody. But, I mean, they're pushing in as five. I'm not sure if I particularly like this if I'm on the side of Ocean. They really think you should get York in a side lane. Keep York there with the Maiden in the Baron buff. It's literally just like having, like, three cannons. Like, the towers just absolutely go down. Tristana just needs... You know, like, one or two body blockers. She doesn't need all four or five of here. I know, you know, York is your strongest person, probably, at the moment. Uh, but that's not particularly needed. Jin, look at me, Jin. All four shots and Q landed on Zach and only took off, like, not even a th third of his health, right? Like, he's still super healthy. So, they're going to back it off on off. Dragon here. Uh, TDK probably needs to let them just sort of take this dragon. It's not the, you know, don't need the fight for this one. Save it on up. See if you can, you know, pop... As many minions as you can. Collect as many camps as you can. As uh, people are just going to be sitting in a, in bushes. And if they're going to be sitting in bushes... I mean, they're not even going to walk near this. I mean, Kha'Zix is... Oh. He's just going to jump out, right? Like, Kha'Zix is the one person who can leave. I know they're trying to get a pick. But, come on. Like, they got to get something. York. Oh, he found a Jin. And uh, Jin, guess what? Oh my gosh, 1Q took half of Jin's health. Missed the Orn ult. Here comes Kha'Zix now. York is on his way. It flashes. Nice job. Oh, the rope dope trying to slip around. There's another Q. Oh, well, this is just too much CC. Okay, it's 5 versus 1 in a Maiden. So, uh, York tried to do his best. Uh, dip, duck, duck, dive, dodge. But he was just like that one kid in uh, the Dodgeball movie. He got, uh, he got hit in the head with a wrench. He down. And he's out. As uh, Tristana, though, uh, she's dropping bombs in this tower. That's what Yordles do. Her and Ziggs. Dropping it in. Come on, directed cam. Orn going to go in here. Does get in on the Thresh. We'll see if they want to counter engage this. I think he's just giving it up. I think Thresh is just like, yeah, I, I didn't hit the runaway button fast enough. There's a run button in this game. He's like, where's the run button? Where's the run button? As everyone else is booking it out of there. Let's see, it's Steel Wave Blue. Okay, so a couple of sloppy kills given over to TDK. Uh, kind of the trade off, some damage and stuff on the side uh, of Ocean. Uh, could have executed that better, but it's okay. It's only week two. It's only week two. We'll see the coordination improve as the season goes along. As Seraphine has completed her Moonstaff Renewer. There we go. Pumped out some heals, shields, ability haste, health. You know, give everything done. So, we'll see how that 
helps or hinders the next team fight depending on you who you want to win. Now, hopefully chat is doing absolutely great and you know, you know, enjoying this, having some fun here in the first game of our two game series here as uh Baron is coming up in a minute and 30 seconds. Dragon is coming up here in 3 minutes. Now, uh TDK is probably going to have to want to fight this fight this next dragon here in 3 minutes over on the side of them because you really don't want to give Infernal Soul over to, uh, you know, Thresh. And I guess, you know, York. York eventually will stop being the pain that he is. Eventually, you know, once you've lost all of your Nexus Towers and Inhibitor Towers. And you, you got nothing left. Uh, or until you get late enough. Orn still has only upgraded one item. He's level 13. I don't know why Directed Cam loves to kill minions. Or minions words loves killing the words so we'll see how it goes cats doing their best and you know all out impression here where's that going nowhere tristana i mean baron's in what 40 seconds they're just setting up for this york's gonna be on the bot lane that's gonna be going down right nothing i mean Soon as Orn can upgrade, maybe we'll see some, you know, Orn upgradables, Orn upgradables, ornaments. I don't know, whatever, whatever your fans. I th I like the uh, uh, Orn upgradables today. That's what I'm gonna go with. As we see pandering around towers, York is back to buy a black cleaver because why not? More damage, more health, more CDR. It's not CDR anymore. It's ability haste. Can I still call it CDR? Do you guys even care if it's you know? CDR or whatever. Oh, that's a dead Kha'Zix. And this is probably going to be the game because uh, with Kha'Zix going down and Jin going down because they got stuck with no vision. Orn's going to miss his ultimate. Seraphine was not there at all. Leona's dropped as well. Oh my gosh, it's a dance dance party for KDA Seraphine. But uh, that hook says I'm your fan, but I'm not allowed to go over the wall. As uh, York is now just going to fight the two of them here in mid lane, while the rest of his team decides that Baron is a more fun objective. As uh, York, I mean, what? I mean, York probably can get to like what? Some nice healing off. Ooh, that's a nice Q. There we go. Can Seraphine? Ooh, nope. Not enough kitty cats. Come on, keep fighting. I mean, yeah, they took Baron in their backing because Thresh is at no health and Mana, Galia burned a whole bunch. Not gonna happen. Okay, final push time, probably. I mean, 30 seconds till Dragon. Do they do they push it in or do they take the, the Dragons? I think that they go Dragons, right? I mean, it's a free Infernal. You have Baron. You just take it. You just, you just go Infernal, Tristana taking the red buff. Ding. I mean, so far, I mean, the patience on the side of Ocean has been very spectacular this game. A lot of times, you know, from those early kills that we saw in the mid game into the game pause. So we got a pause now. Great. Um, and... Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. Well, we're going to give it about another 30 seconds here. And if this pause goes too long, we'll flip it over to the other screen. Um, technically, there's a three-minute spectator delay. So, uh, the pause gets near to three minutes. We got to switch over. I don't think. I don't think at this point of the game. I mean... TDK, if you don't know that Ocean is on Infernal Dragon as it spawns, is pretty silly not to know that at this moment. Now, whether or not you're going to want to go fight them or not is your own decision, right? I don't think... You've got to try, I guess, but I wouldn't even really uh, do that as we have the unpause coming through. And this is... If they do not get off a great engage here with Seraphine teleporting, Jin's going to ultimate up and not in time, and this dragon's going to drop down quickly as the Ornal ultimate does... Finish that. Just to get some knockdowns. Oh, Galio's actually going to drop. So great job. Kha'Zix has not gotten one. But there is Golden Galio. And with York and Tristana down. And Zach's going to have to jump his way out. That was an awesome job on the side of Dandelion Knights. 
Excellent, excellent job. I mean, they, I mean, they focused the right people. They got rid of York. They got rid of Tristana. And as soon as they got rid of the damage dealers, I mean, Galio's got nowhere to go. He just got Zol Golden, and he uh, pieced his way out. Zach and Thresh aren't going to do anything. I mean, Ocean did uh, pick up the Infernal Soul. I mean, they still have Baron. Lagos, well, go get the minion. Oh, I guess there are no minions. They're going to lose this mid-tier 2 here. Really good job counterpunching in on the side. Throw the hook right before he charges, and there's the Thresh. We're going to see lands go in, and Kha'Zix trying to finish this one off. And the kills, and there's another hook in, and they're going to slap them together. Down goes the Tetris. is now going to come back here, and Lagos is actually going to drop as we have five men pushing in against four. Now, Zach still has the Baron. Uh, oh, flash in with the E. Andre Shrine is going to jump away, and now it comes in the time, and Zach's going to go over the wall. He does get on the Kha'Zix, and the Seraphine is going to have to just jump around. It's going to happen. Tristana is going to go ballsy, jump all the way, and trying to get some resets. Double set, double kill coming on the side, and Zach slapping some people around with the help of Yark and his body of a shovel. And double kill for Galio sometimes showed up, and we have a teleport. And Baron, Bob, Zach, you're the one with Baron. You got to push in mid. <laughs> you got to push mid, buddy. Zach, I know you want to go do blue buff, but you're the one with Baron. You got to push the minions. Uh, Calio, going to do his bestest from the restus. Festivus for the Festivus. Takes one inhibitor. York, he should be taking a second inhibitor. Gal, Zach, actually, you know what? He went to the bot lane. Good for him. I thought he was going to go do blue buff. He skipped blue buff. He's pushing in bottom. He still has Baron. How much longer does... Uh, it's going to wear off here before these get there. So that's an inhibitor. Timers are up. Everyone's up now. They're opening up the curtain call. Zach's going to jump his way out. So he out of there. Two inhibitors down. York's going to pick up blue buff this time. Now, York, my friend, I don't know if you really need the Tiamat <laughs> at this point of the game. I mean, you're just dying to, like, Kha'Zix and Jin here. Just get some more armor, my buddy. I mean, the Black Cleaver gets you enough health. I mean, I know the Dead Man's Plate's great for movement speed and the armor, but if you just got, like, another, like, armor item, you'd be all set. Plus, I don't Merc Treads. I don't know. Leona versus the... Yeah, that's, that's fine. Not gonna harp on it too much. Probably though. Probably should. Uh... Survivability. Survivability is the name of the game right now on the side of Ocean and the level 17 York. Actually hits level 18 with that camp, largest level of the game, of course, because you can't go higher than 18. Like high school. And I'm getting pings from someone. Someone's doing something. Okay, Tristana be pushing in the bot lane, York pushing the top lane because jungle camps are cooler than uh, minion lanes. Apparently, we're going to follow the York around. TDK, you uh, probably have to give up the inhibitor. I mean, I probably would not fight the inhibitor. I mean, it's probably not worth it. I would you try and save it till you get to the actual Nexus Towers. So that way you have something to kind of back you up. Oh my gosh, just the little kitty cats doing all the damage. Jin not going to be able to, like, can't even go through the Maiden. Jin autos cannot kill the Maiden, and that's, you know, all the damage. And it looks like a three-man stun on the side of Leona. And here comes the Orin Ulti. It's going to airball everyone. Here's the engage happen as in goes. Gallo's going to go with the taunt, and it looks like Tristan's going to find the back. Zach jumping into the back line. He, he's jumping around, and Seraphine's going to get a two-man dance dance party. But here he goes, bunch into the back line. Zach, he's doing a better job with his layer in the CC. His Orin's going to have to, you know, charge his way to the back line. But Zach's like, you know what? I get a jump again because this is the jump in party coming down and finish off. Hook's coming out from Lagos. Not going to finish off that. That one is Jin's going to try and live down. Damage dealers again on the side of TDK doing an excellent job of dancing and slipping through these team fights, but they are not able to put out the damage and they have fallen to Imagine Ocean in game number one. Let's see if it actually lets me look at stats. Last night we couldn't look at the stats. We can look at stats. Okay. So Tristana somehow ended up with 11 kills. <laughs> Picking up kills right and left in those team fights, being super aggressive on the scatter cat, uh, and we, in fact we had like you know two aftershocks and a, and a and a guardian. These three people right here just protect the protect the you know the Tristana and York. You do your own thing with the three, two, and fifteen on the side of 
you know, TDK, the, the carries did fairly well kind of in the 5-on-5 five five at T-Fines, but I don't think that they were really set up to do 5v5 against, you know, Zach Galio Thresh, right? Like, there's just too much CC and bodies in the way that they want to kind of necessarily lay everything on top of. So, you know, they did a decent job here. So, we're going to switch over and look at the grab. Oh, my gosh, that York damage. Tristana did a fairly good job as well coming out on the side of that. It was quick true damage tristana with the bombs physical we kind of know where this is going Ooh, Jin, more physicals tristana and york split on the damage healing done let's check to see seraphine not that much zach of course ridiculously overpowered with his healing coming in damage taken of course and vision score one last thing to check here for the people before we go to the break nice job on the side of galio why does galio have 87 how many wards did he place 14 words destroyed for control words purchased for huh 87 i wonder if his ult gives vision that's kind of weird well maybe there's a bug or something oh well great job on the side of galley with a vision score of 87 so i think this uh game one uh mvp we'll throw it over to uh the york for creating the split push i mean pretty much everyone on the side of ocean played their roles fairly well i mean could have gone to the thresh hooks to the zach engage galio follow-up or the tristana damage coming out on the, in those team fights and on the other side i want to give it to nortego on that seraphine she had some really excellent ultimates on her side they just didn't quite layer up with the rest of the team but it was nice to see everyone dancing around so it looks like they've been pinging me for a while to get into the lobby for game number two and of course no one can see the stats because i forgot to flip over to the screen so no one saw any of that and we're going to the intermission instead
truth. So when it comes to that stretch, don't sweat it, you lose. I heard you like to make bets. Tell me that isn't true. The odds tend to wind crazy. The other dog is you. It's the battle of the desperados. The same gang of weapons, all the dope liquor bottles. One's got the cards, one's got the guns. Ain't nobody winning till the battle's done. They grinning at each other under the sun. Twist the fates of trade, the rigs on the hunt. Oh, fight each other, but it ain't for fun. Ain't nobody stopping till the final one. What up? It's your boy Boss Panda. That was Twist of Fate versus Braves with my partner in crime, Skits of Menace. Now, I want y'all to check out his channel. yourself a man even when i was alive all i needed was a plan in a 20-foot axe in my cold-blooded hands you were a bit overused like your name is comic sans i named after a van but i'll hit you like a truck most summoners play you because you're easy and they suck i'm a zombie now no telling when i'll fall and i'll chop off all your limbs till you're using nubs to crawl yeah i'm gonna fall with the gold i get from eating you cannibalizing spartans is just the thing i need to do silly fool you think that i'm gonna be protecting you i got a whole see what chops creating blood residue I let it run, let it run, let it run Till the battle's almost done Then I lick my blade for fun Everyone starts cheering Cause they see the battle's won As I look out of my eyes To the red burning sun The fight between the living and dead Two champions who come face the face From the battle to the defense A fight between the living and dead Two champions who come face the face I want to try something different this time. I want to speak through the characters' eyes and give y'all a perspective of their life and how they feel. So, if y'all don't like lore, then you might not like this song. So when I speak, it'll be through Yorick's eyes. Anyways, let's get started. I've seen enough death to last me 30 lifetimes Been to hell and back, buried souls for their white crimes A fine line divides good and evil Who am I to decide after life For these people who just want to survive It's like a demon grows inside of me Eating at my soul as I dig their graves happily Cause you see, this is my legacy Passed down through my family It's all I've ever known I was a grave digging prodigy Proud to be a Mori with a shovel in my hand Imbued with the spirits of my great late dad 
final rest memorial was my only plan damnation and salvation sadly were my only friends so i've never had a girl never passed on my soul the last morning of this world i died never having known love to pass on my seed the last magic human being to bury every lingering soul that was in need yeah it's a it's a sad story i know but i've come to terms with my life and i accept what's happened in the past there's really nothing i can do to change that i mean i just gotta keep moving on you know isn't that what people do i mean that's what they do right i don't know now if i had a son maybe fate wouldn't have taken me on this silly journey where i did with such complacency magically ingrained in me to carry out my legacy and one day stop burying all those who are friends of me i haven't known many enemies but my gravesite was ruined woke up on the shadow aisle struck with confusion where do i go from here that's what went through my head guess i just gotta keep helping many shades of death so i'm stuck with the countless quota a gateway for the underworld guess i'm hell's chauffeur curse till the end of time not sure where i'm going now centuries of graves get a little bit old to plow it was time to find a way out headed south had to find salvation through my rotting corpse no doubt when i had arrived everything seemed lost doing the league the mori name thrives at all costs so now that i'm in the league it's almost like where do i go from here you know uh that's what my family name they live on so that was the goal of my father and my father's father Maybe this was destiny. Instead of having a son, I fight for the world to remember us. Remember Mori. And I'm back, everyone. That was Boss Panda's uh, York rap. Old school, old school league player. We're talking like pre-season one, right? We're talking like beta player dropping the bars and the music coming in tonight person that is that's the who we listen to tonight boss panda so old cool stuff so you guys all watch the draft it's all on the screen you can see what's happening uh we got echo soraka malphite vi kaisa so we got three champions that want to say okay we got tired of scattercat jumping in on tristana getting all the kills and, you know, being the AD carry. Where you have three champions whose whole entire goal now is to kill the AD carry. Malphite and Vi. And then, they're like, oh, fine, we'll just follow up with Kaisa. She could dive into the backline too, right? We'll do our best dive into the backline comp from TDK. That just happened to them. They are going to run the dive to the backline comp. And, uh, then there's Soraka. Heal bot. I'm not, I'm kidding. Soraka's more than a heal bot, but it's a heal bot. Uh, so it does though look like Storm is going to get Elise through. So that was banned in game one. Get, instead, Zach was banned this time. And TTK just banned out the three champions that like kind of crushed them. Uh, they did leave up the Thresh, so we'll see Lagos back on that champion. Scatter's taking the Jin this time. Uh, we'll see how good he is. Open with his current call. Swain coming out on the side of Ocean. So nice, uh, you know, Mage Drain tank there in the middle. And this Scion engaged. So the tank. First tank battle in the top lane. So, yeah. Cool. At least Orn versus Yorick was cool, right? Like, shovel versus horns. Like, there was some play and counterplay. Uh, top lane's just going to be like, I'm going to hit you with a Q. Then I'm going to hit you with a Q. And then I'm going to put up a shield. And one already has a shield running all the time. And he's like, oh, slam the ground. Oh, kick a minion. Oh, oh. And then nothing's going to happen because their goals are to kill the uh, AD, the KD carries. <laughs> so we'll see. Elise is the one with the aggression this time. Storm with the Zack was, uh, you know, a lot passive. You have Zack, you got to get those levels up before you can really start ganks. But did have that, like like I said, like super early uh, dragon in game one. Don't think you can do that. You can probably do that on Elise. Maybe don't need as much help from your bot lane. But the fact that Tristana... Uh, can really push in and the fact that the Kha'Zix was top lane allowed that first dragon to go over to the side of ocean pretty easily um, I know they got countered uh, on the one side with the, the death that got the first blood so Storm Strom oh oh leave me alone That's, it, it happens it happens we can just I mean 
Okay. Okay, chat. Oh, no. Aren't you guys supposed to be, like, in the game? I know you're doing your pick bands, so as soon as the game starts, you guys gotta drop on out of here. I don't have, I don't have time to, like, watch the chat during the game, because I'm busy casting the sweet action. Uh, Swain versus Echo in mid lane. I mean, Echo's got the better push and better mobility, but Swain can do a better job drain tank. I don't know. I feel like Jin's gonna die in every team fight unless Jin's super far ahead. Malphite, Vi, Echo, Kaisa. I'm, Jin's just gonna dead, right? So if Swain can, like, out-tank everything, and maybe Elise can get onto the back line and kill Kaisa unless Soraka can heal through everything. It's just, I mean, it's just gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. Uh... I think that I think that's that's where we're at right now. It's like all my cords are all tangled. I didn't do the pick bands this time, so no buttons from that one. Maybe we'll do some button action in uh, in this game here. Maybe we'll get a, a yes and some no's if I can predict. So since we have Imagine uh, Ocean here, and we have Imagine Infernal and Cloud. And Mountain, those teams have been playing. I think we caught some of their teams on the stream already. Go ahead, watch, to, go to the YouTube, check out all the games. They're definitely over there. Uh, if they're not, yell at Shadow. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Don't yell. Don't ever yell at Shadow, please, please. Who will come and find me and hurt me? Don't ever yell at Shadow. Uh, but everything should be over there. So, I mean, what do you, th you guys think? Like, I'm thinking. This game, I think it's going to be a Mountain First Dragon followed by an Infernal into Cloud. That's my prediction. Who thinks I'm right? Who thinks I'm wrong? I'm go I'm predicting all three. I'm not just like, you know, doing one right now and then the other two ones that happen. No, I do all three right now. Uh Mountain, I don't I don't even know what I did, said already. I already got I said Cloud last and Mountain first, so Mountain Infernal Cloud. That's where we're at. Mountain for a cloud. Okay. So, top lane tanks. Vi can get off some nice, uh, maybe get an early gank, but probably not. We'll see if Elise goes for a level 2 gank. Now, if you're watching any LCS, LCK, uh, LEC, LPL, farming junglers are, you know, a lot stronger currently than the ganking junglers because of how fast the camps respawn. Uh, that you can just basically do is do a clear and then everything's respawned by the time you get back to, you know, do bottom to top or top to bottom back by repeat because all your camps are back up so it's better to farm than it is to gank but in this setup i think you know the elise is really gonna have to push it to get some ganks in early to try to accelerate that the fastness of her team because the longer she can pre prevent the like dive i don't i don't like hardcore just absolutely like you know, Malphite is a rock, right? He's just like, rock and crushing Jin. I mean, poor Jin. Jin's going to die a lot this game. That's my. Pr that's the second prediction here is Jin is just going to get absolutely smashed. Uh, you can't flay Malphite or Vi off your AD carry. <laughs> they, they, he's just going to get, you know, uh, hit up and, and then knocked up. He's going to be in the bouncy house. Uh, he's going to be on the trampoline. Uh, whatever, you know sayings you want to put in for what's going to happen to his chin is probably going to happen but maybe swain and scion can body block enough of that stuff or have all that not matter if they can get a uh you know jump on through although i do feel that like soraka is going to be kind of squishy she gets hit by the wrong thing swain should be in the middle i mean i don't know it just depends on an echo a lot of things can go right and left i mean of course, if Jin gets far enough ahead from laning phase, or like two or three dragons, it may not even matter, right? You I mean you may just be like Flash, Gale Force, Auto, Auto, uh, you know, and your tank's dead because he's like critting you. But we're gonna jump on over through the uh, transition here. Hopefully, it transitions and we'll be in the game in just a moment. Masaki! All right, so we are loading in on the top lane on the side of the Dandelion Knights. We have Mystic Wave on the Malphite. Uh, in the jungle, we have Infinity Blades on the Vi. Notego, Note, Note Agro, 
Note Drago. I've been saying his name probably wrong the entire time. Note Aggro? Note Aggro? On the Echo mid lane. Oh, that's going to be brutal when I can't do this. Uh, Lord Boomerus is the AD carry Kaisa. Fid me, please, playing Sorak in the bot lane. On the side of Imagine Ocean, we have Smurb de Perp on the top Scion. Strom in the jungle Elise. Quacks on the uh, mid lane Swain. Scattercat on the AD carry, G AD, oh, blah, 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 AD carry Jin. The yeah, Agos running the Thresh Hook. And Soraka, 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 and oh. So, at least had to start E. It's okay that uh, you know Scion starts Q. Thresh Hook's fine, but that at least E. That's gonna be a struggle. So, she's going to need help with blue buff. Oh, Scion. Oh! He's going to walk it out. Okay, let's let's check in on the junglers here. We're going to bounce. We're going to do our own bounce house with the camera action. Sorry. Uh, Smite's red buff. And Elise is finishing off blue now. Maybe. Echo places a ward so they know that it goes over. And Echo is going to be seen dropping through here as that wave is pushed in. Elise, I do not think you can go for this gank. I know you're the quick spider. Oh, even with the red trinket. Don't clear it. They know if you clear it. They know. Echo's run down. Oh, you're in trouble. He's got to run out. He's going to just jump in there with the Q. He's going to finish this one off. He's going to repel out. Nope. Flashes. So, uh, this is the problem with the uh, ganking junglers. Uh, you have one camp. One assist. Vi is already... He's gonna Vi's gonna three buff you. And you're you're stuck without a flash. And Vi is, you know, accelerating in the uh, camp as we just see the boringness of top lane. It's for those I mean, I don't know. I mean top lane is great. I mean my Malphite but my boy. You take out a lot of damage. Oh, nice pull by the swain, dropping all the abilities. Getting the health. So we have two champions that infinitely stack. It looks like, you know, one and try one flash. Go for the punch. Let's see if there's not going to be enough. Q. No. Hmm. So flash burnt on the side of Thresh. Meh. It's Thresh. It's fine. He's got Hexec flash. Doesn't matter. So once again, junglers, keep farming. Stop ganking. Top laners. Stop fight. Keep fighting. But don't don't fight when you're like at like, you know, no health. You s Why did you start Doran's Ring? I mean, I know you need mana and stuff, but like, man, you're going to have to burn Teleport now. Scion's going to be able to back. I know it gets a Doran's Ring because he started with the... Cr Is he going to go for the Tower Dive? Oh, Smurp. He's going to go... F oh, Shield? Flash! Oh, and it looks like Elise is going to go for the stun. Oh, there's the double pull, and we'll see if there's going to be enough damage come out. And the early game, Ignite takes down the Echo, so 3-0 to zero in kills on the side of Imagine Ocean. Excellent job. I mean, the early game pressure, so just Science straight up 1v1-ing in the top lane with the help of that Doran's Ring in the Corrupting Pot. Just straight up Tower Dive. Mystic Wave not respecting that ability. And Elise actually getting in a gank. Probably when he... Uh, you know, should have been able to get that gank in because Echo should have been playing safe knowing that Elise is, is the whole point of Elise, right? It's like, you need to get ganks off. If you don't get off ganks and all you're doing is farming, you're failing as an Elise, right? Like, that's just not what the champion is set up to do. So, set, set up yourself for safety. 
and uh, you can go from there. So, uh, you know, 1K gold lead at five minutes is, is definitely respectable on the side of Ocean. Oh, Thresh Hook on a minion. We'll see if Malphite gets stuck here, or if Elise sees it. No. Now Elise is level 4 to Vi's level 3, because Vi also went for a gank. Now Vi's running Ghost. Second time Ghost on Infinity Blade, so I think maybe this is a style choice on the side of the jungler to when running Ghost all the time. That's a great knockup, and I bet we're going to have a slow coming in here. And it looks like Cocoon. Ooh, no, Flash coming out. There's a great Cocoon, and there's the Repeller. We'll see if we get enough damage in onto this Malphite. Another Q. Yes! Strom is taking a another kill up in the top lane, and this Malphite is going to be way behind. Burnt Flash has teleport. Uh, Vi, though, this time, going to get the Air Drake <coughs> into Ocean. So, once again, you show yourself top. Jungler's down in the uh, the bottom half. Instantly, him going for Dragon. It's definitely something to uh, people need to start respecting more often. Mystic, my bud. You can't be taking half your health from, like, Qs from Scion. Like, walk to the side or something. He's level 6. He's just going to ult you. Oh, the return kill. And it looks like, you know, just clear out the minions, so. The shutdown does go over. That is going to help the Malphite in lane. Uh, and Scion's is going to teleport back to push us in. See, he's going to have, like, two tower plates at, like, seven minutes on top lane Scion. And he's, oh, my gosh, that's going to be so dirty. Yeah, he's going to be up in gold. Let's see how much gold is up. Three, three. 3.3 to 2.1. Now the gold lead on the side of Ocean seems to be up on the top part. At least going for the second buff here. We'll see what Vi wants to do. She knows when the red buff spawns. I mean, do you, I, I mean, set up for a gank and bot, on bottom. Echo's going over for wards in on the red buff. I mean, they're tracking at least fairly well through the early part, but then, I mean, for that first, like, gank, right? And then after that, they lost track of her. She's got enough, like, three uh, very important, uh, or two important kills. I mean, Scion's doing most of the work on the rest of them here. Bot lane going slightly in favor of Kai'Sa. Better wave clear. Also, that gank that burnt the flash. I mean, they're just not going to push up. Knowing that Elise has to gank, right? Elise isn't farming right now. She's just sitting there. I know she got the ganks off, but she's just sitting here. So the pressure is on her to gank. And here it comes. Flash. Flash. Silence. Great cocoon before the sides goes through. And does that the flash on through? The fish on flight's going to be missing. And it looks like we're going to have a teleport by Echo coming in. Going to get in on the stun as Elise did go over. Nope, not going to happen. And as it happened, it looks like Jin's going to be landing some auto attacks. And Echo is not going to. Ooh, hook in. Not going to flay. Under tower into the Jin W. And Echo back ult is Soraka trying to take some shots as well. And throws out the Q. Jin flash not level 6 yet. Can't pull up the current call. Maybe finish it off. There's one flash. There's another Reko. And it looks like Echo is going to go back in the dance. Back and forth from these people. It's nice silence. There's six. And the curtain call. There's one shot. There's two. There's three. There's four. But no kills. Heals being burnt. Flash is being burnt. So flash heal down on Kaisa. Flash barrier down on Soraka. Flash teleport down on Echo. Flash down on uh, Jin. Flash d a down on Thresh and Ignite. And Swain just stood in the mid lane and got CS the entire time. Ooh. And Vi's up here. It looks like we may have a punch. And let's see if he... F oh, nice! Right before the tower goes down. Pulls it up. Let's see if he gets a punch in onto the tower plate. He gets it! Perp gets the tower plate. So, uh, Burnt Flash, but that's uh, ultimate on the side of Vi. Going to keep everyone there. And it looks like uh, Echo looking in for the Elise. Not going to be found. So, Vi finally gets off a nice gank for herself. Excellent job there. They're checking to see if they need to get over. And it looks like, oh, no, there's the Kakuna. It looks like the ult coming out on the Soraka. Going to get the pull through. And Quax is there. 
Kill over to the Swain. Down goes Soraka. Pink Ward on top. This is Red Buff. Hand it over to Kaisa? Are they going to hand it? Are they going to wait for Spy? No? Kaisa. Level 10. Not level 10. 10 minutes. Going to be picking up the Red Buff. Clearing out the ward. So the next dragon is in 30 seconds. It is Ocean. So I was completely wrong on my dragon picks. The rest of you were all like, what were you thinking? How can you predict all the dragons? And I got absolutely zero of them correct in order. <laughs> As uh, they're pinging out onto this. Uh, oh. Uh-oh. Jin's pushing in, though. It should be fine. Maybe. She has health. She's six. Vice seven. See, this is the problem, right? You're ganking a lot is Elise. As Echo's going to go in here onto the Swain, just dump all of the damage. Swain's just going to ult and get the pull through. And it looks like Echo, if you go back in time, you're just going to burn damage and go right back onto yourself. Try and jump yourself away. Jump over. And there's the explosion. No, man. It looks like flash in over on the side. Not going to happen. Is oh, there's a Scion. <laughs> and Vi... Nope. Maybe. Vi does have ult, but just hand that over. No mana on the side of Swain. Takes the lantern. Did they start the dragon? I mean, you have no mana on your mid laner. I mean, their mid laner is dead. Your top laner doesn't have teleport. I guess you can do this. I mean, you're giving up possible tower points in mid lane, but I don't think you care about it at this point. As Ocean still needs to keep that pedal to the, you know, down, keep that thrall going. Because look at Vi. I mean, Vi and Elise are just both at seven now, but wasn't that way until that uh, that kill came through. As t some tower plates now going down on over to. Uh, there we are. Come on, Scion. Oh, poor Soraka. You dead. An Echo gets on to this. Elise. Jin's like all four shots. Nice job, Jin. Second time in a row. Scion, you were by yourself, buddy. Just two split up after that uh, pick onto the Soraka. We'll set everything back here. Okay, let's reset here at 12 and a half minutes. So Scion has gotten four tower plates in the top lane. Uh, mid lane is one tower plate aside, and Jin has gotten one tower plate down the bot lane. So goal should definitely be in favor of Ocean, and it is uh, by two and a half K currently at the moment. Uh, CS, favor of Scion and Swain, and that's it on the side of Ocean, and it looks like Vi and Kai's on that side. Now Vi doesn't, hasn't backed in forever. She's back now in bot. She just straight off of two da daggers. Straight bot the Eclipse. So we'll see how well uh, this works for her uh, going into uh, the next gank here. And I think she needs to start getting in onto this Swain or this Jin. She really needs to start progressing. But the problem is she's level 8. I mean, but she's trying to match ganks, and it's not working. You either need the power form and then make your ganks be way more impactful. As Flash Hook comes out on the side of Thresh, great silence on the side of Soraka. Definitely, you know, preventing any further engage coming in. But this is all Elise is going to do is gank. And Vi, you had the opportunity to just power farm so you could be higher up and level and then come back and, you know, get better counter ganks. And you did get one gank in the top lane, but other than that, have not been successful, although you did get the dragon. So I guess it's one for one a dragon. I know we're still just talking about the jungle matchups because talking about the top lane tanks is boring for most of the people in the crowd. And while we all like watching Thresh, it's Lagos, everyone. I mean, his his Thresh hooks, uh, they hit as much as most baseball players hit a baseball, which is one-third of the time. And Echo is going to throw in here. It looks like he's going to go back in time to miss the cocoon. And Swain's going to win for the ultimate. He's going to go hit the stun here. Nope. And down goes Echo. Ignite taking Echo out again. And Swain just too much damage here in the mid lane. Echo cannot reverse it. And that means it's going to be a free, uh, you know, scuttle crab for the Elise. And Cyan just straight up took top tower at 14 and a half minutes. This is very impressive. Mr. Perp, 
You have had a very good series so far from games one and now in game two. And Hook comes out on the side of Thresh. There's that one third time we were talking about. He's going to drop all the abilities to see if we can get all the damage out. But Soraka, you just heal and heal and heal. Is Scattercat, you ran out of bullets, buddy. You're out of bullets. Is everyone just standing around? Kai's just trying to throw everything out and let's see if we can get another one. Curtain Call comes up. There's the flash. There's one bullet. There's two. And he's not going to finish the second one. His Vi is going to just walk out. Malphite comes up with the ultimate. I missed that teleport. I'm very sorry about that, everyone. Thresh Hooks is not going to map. And it looks like, Lagos, you're going to go down here, buddy. Not enough. The CC comes around. I am so sorry about that, everyone. I was too busy watching them chase the rock. I missed the TP from the Malphite, who then just hit his button and killed AD Carry. As Swain's not going to be pushing in the mid lane. And we're going to see where at least takes this Rift Herald. Drop taking the mid, taking the top. Nobody knows. Scion, though, he's just going to be in charge of his bot lane. Look at all the pieces. He's on, like, the, uh, what do they call it, the, the CDR carousel with the Nami Sender and the uh, the Glacial Buckler and the uh, the uh, Aegis of Legion. Look, I mean, it's, it's just straight up, right? He's just, uh, He's got all the pieces. All the pieces. None of the none of the, the whole caboodle. Kitten and cab Jin's also on pieces. What did Jin picked up uh, Executioners already? That healing. The problem with getting Executioners on Jin... I mean, it's, it's important, right, to get the, the healing reduction. But the four auto attacks, right? I mean, the grenade can apply it to W and the ult. Like, I get that. But, like, it's not like a, a real ADQ is like, pop, 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 like applying it. It's just like, pop, pop, pop. I mean, it takes so long to get that applied. It's, I don't know necessarily if it's worth it this early. I know you're going up against the Soraka. But I would have liked to see you finish the Gale Force. Get a little bit more mobility as you know that the top half of the map is coming for your head, right? You can wear the mask all you want, but you can't hide behind it. And dragon spawning here in 17 seconds. And mountain! So... Nope. No one... I... Pff, absolutely brutal. Okay, guys. Who's gonna get the mountain dragon? Red or blue? Red or blue? Ocean? Oh, Echo is in trouble. Flashing out. Swain old Bert. Oh, back right into the thresh hook. Uh, nice uh, repel from the uh, Elise. That didn't really help anything. Drop the drop scuttle. Drop the scuttle, Strom. Come on. Okay, never mind. They're just going to do dragon. Thresh hook in on the Soraka. Into the knockup. Oh, my gosh. The Soraka got hit by all the CC. But then Thresh is going to absolutely finish. They tried to split, do the dragon and finish off. And then, oh, my gosh. So they make this save. Vi's going to go over. It looks like Flesh coming. There's the knockup. She's going to go. For oh, she's going to smite steal while she went into the animation. Absolutely ridiculous. As Swain has ran out of mana. Not going to keep on fighting. Jin has the flash out of this one. And Scion, just because you have all the mana and the health, does not mean that you can actually kill anyone right now. So you're going to have to run on and And Echo has teleported back in. And we're going to see if he's going to run and get a kill. What were you guys doing? Just take either do the dragon or do the team fight they split decision and this is why split decisions are not the best thing for you ladies and gentlemen because they just gave over the mountain drake over to the side of tdk and tdk is all like yes and then ocean's all like no! see the buttons are what is happening as we're probably gonna go back to standard lanes which i'm very disappointed in on the side of ocean they were running such a cl relatively relatively clean game compared to game one down here in the bottom half and they could have just dropped scuttle and man like look how well they played in game one and how they like closed out and took the objectives they just needed to keep got the kill on echo drop scuttle mid and then while that's taking mid either start dragon or do the team fight instead they didn't drop the scuttle they half did the dragon and they half did the team fight and as a result they lost everything make one decision at a time and do that decision all the way that's the point for today does it count if, if thresh hits a, a hook on a, on a minion like, are we counting that? Uh, Shelly is summoned here in the bot lane as Vi's going to get CC'd up. This charge should be enough to take out the tower. How much further it's going to go after that, we don't know. Malphite is in top lane. No teleport. He's walking down the mid. Swain is covering that. Swain is down here. Echo covering them. Uh, there's a Swain. Go through and the Thresh hook into we'll skip to get the play. And there's the pull in. And oh my gosh, the CC with the help of Swain and Thresh. Absolutely ridiculous to get the pulls through. And there's the explosion. Shelly's going to go in. And there's the Vi ult in onto the uh, Elise. So that's not going to really matter. Scatter's actually going to pick up that kill. Elise going to drop in. And Litten all the way out to safety. Give me a Y. Give me a E. Give me a F. 
much better job on the side of Ocean in that coordination of that play. Scion is just ignoring Echo right now. <laughs> uh. Okay. I do want to say, though, that Mr. Quacks on the Swain, 6-0-4, has been absolutely killing it this game. I know that uh, Perp's been destroying it up in the top of but uh, Swain, you know, taking out Echo a few times in midline with the help of his buddies, showing for the team fights his, you know, massive AoE damage, the ability to layer the CC with the thresh, the pulls, the hook into the pull, into the play, is uh, it's just absolutely, you know, ruining Soraka, right? If she gets hit by anything, she's just being, like, jerked around, uh, you know, pulled this way or that. It's like she's uh, on a tug-of-war between the thresh hook and then the thresh Flay and then the Swain pull. I mean, she just one, two, uh, just not happening. And now we're gonna try, I guess, try and get in on the Scion. I mean, there's the blue smile. I mean, he's gonna ult his way out. Malphi ult gonna stop this one. We're gonna see if this one happens. Does he have flash? He does not. He's just gonna keep on walking. I mean, let's look how tanky this guy Elise is gonna show up here and just goes like, okay, I guess we're just gonna try and fight this one out. Just, Ion is actually gonna, like, nope, I'm done with this. I'm done. He's gonna actually blast cone his way out of there and. You know, Elise is going to just repel on the way out and maybe get another uh, lantern out. Or is he going to finish it? Oh, nope. Going to go in onto the Scion and finish this that one out. Trying to go with the ultimate. Down goes Infinity Blade and 11. Level 11. Ooh, cocoon over the wall into the Thresh Hook. Oh my gosh. Soraka's got a flash out of this one. Down goes a tower bot line. Echo's going to try and get the repel. Teleport coming in. And Thresh Hook the wrong way. Goes back in time. We get the heal. And now he's going to flash in. Try and go over. It looks like we get the slow. He's trying to get in onto the least. Not going to happen. He's getting slowed here. No, there's a cocoon. He's going to slow that one up. And down goes Notego. Storm taking that one as well. And Soraka, you got to upgrade your boots because you need faster feet than that. Because she's just been sadly getting hit right and left. And uh, Mountain Drake in 30 seconds. Baron is spawned. Scattercat took down a tower somewhere, I think. Or was that Swain in the byline? I can't remember. Someone took a tower. And it's all the gold. No, I mean, the plan of TDK, of uh, the double ultimates to kill the AD carry, excellent game plan. Excellent game plan. Problem is getting there, right? When, I mean, the Malphite loses the sign in lane, like, three kills, and, like, the, it gives up all the tower plates. And that's pretty rough, right? Including getting ganked. Vi not being, not power farming to get six as fast as possible so she can start doing excellent ganks. Instead, tried to match gank for gank with, with Elise. And that's not her game plan, right? That's the, you know, gank, Elise wants that to happen. Uh, and that's, you know, playing the game. And it looks like Scion's going to ult his way out of there. I mean, he's just going to fight these two people while the dragon goes on over. And he's going to get a mountain. He's going to get try and get... Die! Go closer to the tower. So you can just hit the tower. There you go. That's the tower. Okay, Mr. Perp gets the tower with the kill. So, like, the game plan... Do You don't want to match tank for gank with the least of your vibe. You need to power farm the six. Hope your lanes can, you know, do their own thing. Uh, the bot lane played nice and safe through the first part of the game. And then it's just like... They, as soon as they were playing safe, that they were playing safe enough, as soon as they thought they were playing safe enough, the gank happened again. As soon as they saw playing safe enough, oh, there goes another thresh hook. Oh, here comes the cocoon. Oh, here comes the Swain pull. Oh, here comes the Jin W, right? Soon as, like, one thing hits, it's pretty much over, particularly for the Soraka. Kite's had a little bit more ability to get out, but that's just kind of how it goes. And it's been, like, like you know, snowballing here on the side of Ocean. Now, they did, like I said, they didn't properly layer their objectives around that second dragon and that allowed TDK to sort of come back into it, have much more of a fight, but they needed another repeat of that because they were behind and you needed to start trading objectives and they haven't really traded anything. Uh, I can't remember, did they even get a tower in game one? I don't think they did. I think Ocean, I mean, maybe one tower? Like this, like, right, just like, kill Elise. That's, I know it's going to be hard. Flash the Rekha. Oh my gosh, but it's the damage. And Echo's going to go in, and there's just the protection. No one's getting onto anything. Doesn't particularly matter here. As Echo's going to try to get into the back line, and Elise is going to be able to flash out. Nice stun. It's like all five members here, but no one's got onto the gin yet. It's because everyone's the focus of the Elise. And heal and Flash has been out, and it looks like Sign is here. And here comes Quacks on the side with Elise's Echo's going to check out, but he's going to go back in time because he's not able to kill onto the Scattercat. It's going to go down here, and that's nothing. And that's a godlike on the side of Swain. One more down, and no one got onto the slippery Elise. Call her, Butter. 
because she slid right on through everything, everyone. As we're going to keep on going through, and it looks like we're going to keep on chasing. Come on, W. And Echo's like, throw out the cues. And here comes the eight legged acer. Legs are too faster than two here, even though Echo's going to jump right on over the wall. Can you keep on chasing? Nope, they're going to go straight on over the Baron. I mean, they burnt everything to kill Elise, right? If your game claim is just kill Jin, then kill Jin, right? Like, Jin was able to flash and heal to escape Echo, but if Malphite would have saved Ultimate, or Vi would have saved Ultimate for Jin, just kill the Jin, take Jin out of it, and then it's all over, right? I mean, then there's no more damage, although Cyan is super far ahead, considering he's got three items and no one else has, you know, only Echo and I guess Elise have completed two. No one else has. <laughs> Scion is so far ahead. Well, let's look at the gold here. Scion gold. He's at uh, 11,000 compared to the 7.7 .7 on the side of Malphite. So that is a gold difference. Also, let's Swain gold real quick. Swain's the other doing really good. He's at uh, 9.5 compared to the 6.3. So, I mean, we're looking at significant gold difference here on the side of the solo laners for ocean and that's what's coming down to their just ability i mean when the t entire team comp is to dive in onto the ad carry but the ad carry on your team doesn't really particularly matter because your top laner and your mid laner are absolutely wrecking havoc uh and the ad carry is just like cool i'm cannon fodder he's one one in nine right like he's he's not even really i mean he's just being like there right he's a unit right now but it's the top half of the map on the side of ocean absolutely crushing it oh my gosh malphite I mean, one combo takes, like, goes all the way through the shield. And some health. Although, I think TDK can maybe stall it out. I think so. I mean, your goal is to stall into this Baron. Uh, Jin, not the best at pressuring. Swain, not the best at pressuring. Scion, not the best at split pushing. I mean, we're getting at the point where he's going to eventually not be able to do very much. Elise, not very good. I mean, <coughs> this tower should fall. But I think you can keep your inhibitor towers up. And if your inhibitor towers are up, you have a chance, right? Layer your CC properly. I want to see that out of TDK. I want to see the Vi ultimate. I want to see the Malphite ultimate. The silence field come out on the side of Soraka. As Malphite is actually getting engaged upon here by the Thresh. He's going in by himself. Swain's going to actually come in as well. As so much damage going on. It's, oh my gosh, Malphite got absolutely destroyed before he goes. Echo goes back in time. It's not going to happen. And Swain is just absolutely frontlining this. He's a mage, people. He's not a tank. Scion's like, I want to be part of the party, so I'm going to dance right on through. He's going to get uppercut up into the air by Vi. Now he's going to like, ah, oh, a little too far here. And you're going to finish one. Oh, the Q takes out Soraka. And there's another side and we're going to see Elise repel up into the air as Jen he ignored once again ignore the team fight focus on the objectives that is his job here another Q coming out from Scion and that's going to finish this one off and I think with only Thrush being down uh, this is pretty much going to be the end of the game here let's see if they can finish it off uh, Kaisa does not have enough area effect damage I don't think Echo does either to really counteract this push we'll see what they do though Swain takes some towers Elise going to get golden and the triple Q on the side of Sign knocking everyone up and he's finishing. Jen's going to, you know, use that item to jump right on the thing. He's trying to finish this one to damage. Can Strom finish? Nope. And Sion actually takes out the Kaisa and down goes the Malphite. Quacks is better than Rack. Rocks. Oh my gosh. Absolutely ridiculous. That's the end of the game. It's going to be a 2-0 on the side of Imagine Ocean. Okay, I'm actually going to show you the stats this time, because I can actually remember to pull that up. There we go. Okay, so I'm not showing yet, real quick. I know Cyan did super, super well, and per, but Quacks on the Swain. Man, this game's hard to give an MVP to, because the Elise, like did excellent as well like got the, enough ganks off for it to matter and and but at the same time was really pressured to and was kind of on a razor's edge on whether or not if she did not get off like two of those ganks maybe weren't successful maybe she's falling behind and it's a different game and i think maybe the fact that uh, the swain and the scion just really the solo lanes really stood out in this game with the help of the jungler so ocean i mean overall is just you know really good job on them they're 2-0 tonight we'll check on a few more stats here before we get an interview in 
Okay, Zion led the game in damage. I know he's hitting a tank, but come on. Absolutely ridiculous. Was it true? Kaisa, Swain. Turret. True damage to... No. Damage to turrets. I mean, did a lot of damage to turrets, too. Objectives. Yeah, the objectives. Neutral one's done. Healing. Let's see how Sorak did on the healing. At least did more healing than Soraka. I mean, Soraka, that's kind of just a rough game to get hit by all the hooks and everything. We'll do vision score last. And Thresh. The mighty, mighty Thresh with the vision score. Okay. So we'll throw it back up to the stats here. And we'll see who's coming in for the interview. Maybe. Okay. Very good series. You know, bounce back week for Ocean. They did go 0 2 in their first week. So good two on this side. We'll see who they're going to be sending here. I've rather enjoyed the, the matchup. Okay. Super. I forgot doing solo casts. I was not in the Discord room for you to talk to. That is my bad. Okay. No big deal. We're it, good. It's Scattercat, the guy who didn't have to do much in game two because the solo lands carried him. Yep, that's right. It's me. <laughs> but I did participate in 21 out of our 23 kills in game one. Yes, uh, game one, you did participate. So real quick, let's just touch base on how, uh, you know, how'd you guys repair? How'd you guys recover from week one first? Uh, week number one, we had a real coming to Jesus moment with the whole team. <laughs> we kind of sat down, had a big discussion about um, the plan moving forward as far as uh, this is what we're going to be working on as a team in our next practices. We're going to work really hard. We're going to make sure that uh, we never go 0-2 again. That yeah. at worst, we go 1-1. One and one. and mm -hmm. uh, everybody put their noses to the, to the grindstone and really committed to the plan. So plan one for game one was protect the AD carry with a Yorick split push? Not necessarily. We didn't, uh, that wasn't exactly the plan. Uh, the only real plan that we had for game one for draft was uh, just picking Tristana first because when we did our scouting, uh, we noticed that their AD carry on uh, their team uh, played mostly Jin and Tristana. We figured he would want to pick one of those two champions. And Quax and I both played Tristana. We can flex it between mid lane and bot lane. So we wanted to prioritize that as our first pick and just decide what to do from there as the draft went on. Um, and then from there on, uh, the, the kind of plan was to have Yorick split pushing, and then we just figured, you know, they're going to have a better team fight engage because of Orin ultimate, because of Leona ultimate, because of Seraphine ultimate. Um, so the plan for a lot of the team fights was to let them engage first, let them miss most of their engages, which thankfully we were able to do for the most part. And then we could re-engage after that point with the Zac jumping in, Thresh hooking people, Galio jumping in with his ultimate. And, uh, you know, all credit to my teammates on that one because they all did an excellent job in that first game making that plan happen. Yeah, it seemed like your team was, uh, especially with the Zac's pool party skin, I think I said it during the, it was it was an all-in-the-pool team comp, right? As soon as, like, you guys were going in, well, I think Chad even said a few times, it was like, Tristana is YOLOing it into the <laughs> team fights because it was like, Zach, Galio, Thresh, Hook, and, and then uh, Tristana all jumping in, it was just like, okay, everyone, dogpile on one person. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of had the G2 mentality of, like, we're all gonna go in when a team fight gets called, and if it goes bad, it goes bad, but at least we're all committed to it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you say all committed to it. Now, game two, I'm going to be pretty negative about one particular play. Do you know which play I'm talking about in game two? Uh, I think there are a couple you could be pretty negative about, but uh, lay it on Okay, so uh, this is going to be a little coaching moment, particularly because I get to the, the, the you know, the sky view camera, and I get to be in the box, and I'm going to be like, no, nah, the best coach here. Uh, you guys uh, did a nice gank in the mid lane on Echo, right? You kill Echo, and he had ulted out. Uh, you know, Strom's got the uh, Herald. He could have just dropped the Herald in mid lane. Yep. Yep. And then you guys all went to Dragon, which I'm, I'm like, okay, okay. They're trying to 
do two things at once or maybe they don't want to drop the herald or whatever right i'm like uh iffy there because it was a free tower uh and then you they would have had the split decision and then they all stood in the back of the pit waiting to like do an engage over the wall to try and steal the dragon and half your team like thresh like hooked over the wall and scion like did a cue but then the tanks and then it was just like you and elise in there and the other team people were like well we're, we're just gonna leave the two like cc utility people and they went in so you split decision on the tower you split decision on the team fight and the dragon you had three possible choices if you would have all did one of those options you would have been okay you did none of those options you split up everything and you all died and they stole dragon uh <laughs> and we all uh and we all kind of discussed it quickly in the in, in our comms right after that happened uh realized what went wrong what not to do next time and uh we just moved on from it we weren't going to dwell on it too badly and uh, get tilted off of one play okay well it was a rather good opportunity uh for the uh, game two i'm glad that uh you guys you know straightened it out and came together uh anything else you guys want to shout out to uh yeah i mean just a, a big shout out to our opponents dandelion knights because uh we were worried about their team comp game one quite a bit uh we were we were pretty uh pretty scared of their of their uh, engaged potential on us um i i think they're a good team from when we scouted them i was actually pretty worried about going over to again for another week to be perfectly honest uh, and they fought really hard. Even though we went 2-0 oh against them, it wasn't easy by any stretch of the imagination. They put up a good fight. So, uh, good job, Dandelion Knights. You, you, kept us on, on our, uh, you kept us on our toes for the whole game. Uh, also, shout out to Lygos uh, for laning with me and putting up with some of my really bad plays in both games. <laughs> uh, specifically, I know I used my ultimate and Malphite teleported bot lane early on in that game. And I, I just kind of sat there in my ultimate and let him hit me a few times. But, uh, I, I, I did that because I kind of assumed that I was dead anyway because of his ultimate. And I was like, whatever, I'll just, it, it's fine. It's whatever. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Who cares? At this point? It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out to my whole team, especially uh, Dead Teddy, who was on the bench this week. We have a six-man roster, and uh, he was gracious enough to uh, be our bench player for this series as well. So, uh, But everybody on the team did a great job. I have, I have nothing nothing but praise for my team and, and being able to work together tonight um but yeah uh also shout out to you for doing a one-man stream doing play-by-play -play and color <laughs> good job on that <laughs> oh it's, you know what i love to hear myself oh, talk what, you, what else do i do this because besides the fact i don't have time to do anything else so i literally can show up five minutes before the stream starts throw it on and just see you know talk about whatever i see going on on the stream so I enjoyed the cast. So this was uh, the end, last, you know, end of week two here. You guys are two and two. Uh, how do you think the rest of the season is going to go? Any other matchups, your division, other divisions you excited to see? Well, I mean, we're Imagine has four different rosters in the league, uh, and you know, I, I always like tuning into our sister teams and watching them play. Uh, uh, speaking of which, both of the Imagine teams in Ionia play against each other this week, so that'll be really fun for everybody in the Imagine org, uh, all of the teams there. Uh, kind of a kind of our own little civil war, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, as far as uh, in our own division down here, um, uh, Goonball's team, uh, Goonball played on the Imagine roster last season in Seal, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he has his own team now so i'm really looking forward to that because it's you know it, it's it's a friendly rivalry between the two of us because we played with him before uh so that'll be really fun as well um i'm looking forward to watching dandelion knights win next week you can do it dandelion knights i believe in you um and uh yeah um i, I also like watching the uh demacia matches because i i know a few people that played out in demacia so i look forward to watching those as well well, that is excited. We are also looking forward to tomorrow night. What's happening tomorrow night? It's a podcast, I believe, right? Yeah, but aren't you casting? <laughs> I was trying. I, I didn't know you were trying to hype me up. I thought you were trying to hype the matchup. Up. No, I have no idea. Uh, Sh <laughs> Shadows be hosting tomorrow night. He is. 
He's going through the matches. I believe he's going to be picking a Sharima match, or I think there's another match he's looking into where two teams have not been streamed yet. Uh, so he's definitely going to be trying to get two teams who haven't been on the stream yet on stream so we can show as much as we can. Sharima is the division we've streamed the least, and two teams, obviously, if they haven't been on stream, they both deserve to be on stream at least once during the season. So I knew that you had signed up to do casting. I was trying to get you to like pump it up, but... You, you, you. I'm casting tomorrow, everybody. Come watch the SEAL stream tomorrow night. We got a, we got cool games for you to watch. Yeah. That, was that good enough? Did I do good? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. The buttons. Um, okay, that's got to be it. Uh, everyone, subscribe to our YouTube where the VODs will be up after our streams. If you do thought something was highlightable or clippable or super important make sure you have clipped it during the match and dm your division liaison and they will get the information over to us as soon as possible so we can get that on youtube as well uh no pentakills in this game sadly and uh well that's the way it goes sometimes so make sure you do that follow the discords your week three matches should be scheduled after that week four matches should come out tomorrow week three is i think actually sharima has a bye week as a whole so have those teams hopefully you're watching the rest of our streams coming up week four ioni has the bye week and then uh week six is demacia bye week i don't know there's lots of games coming in we're trying to space out the bye weeks for the divisions that needed them to get them done in time so uh upload your games make sure everything's it grid on the website if not dm your uh liaison division liaison uh i think i got everything right there's a checklist of like you know hit the buttons do the twitch youtube twitter follow subscribe you know the dealio you've watched enough of these things okay so i'm gonna set it all off i want to thank uh Dana Lion Knights for putting up a, a good showing tonight. I know it's a rough 2-0, but congratulations to the Imagine, uh, you know, org as a whole as a, we have a 2-0 for motion. Have a good night, and we'll send it off with some more Boss Panda. Hey, this song's for anybody who's ever found out. This song's for you because, well, I do it too. All tower died you, that tower will not save you, please hit your blue pill, or you will give me a kill. Real tower died you, that tower will not save you, please hit your blue pill, or you will give us a kill. You can run now. Tell you right now, no need to be alarmed, when the boss is playing law, he'll die without cause. Playing too aggressive might be a big flaw, but playing too passive gets you dropped like a boss. On a hardwood floor, tower hug as I adore you, I implore you to hug the tower like you always do. Panda ain't scared of a little laser wound I'll make you look like a joke just like a baboon But I can't always make you feel so embarrassed When you game against the boss panda got you feeling scared I can't apologize if against me you get paired But I apologize for when you sing your underwear In your real life outside of the game So carry a bottle just in case you see my name And hurt yourself to rage cause this ain't just a claim I play tower diving like it's a new game All tower dive you That tower will not save you Please hit your blue pill Or you will give me a kill Will tower dive you Tower will not save you, please hit your blue pill, or you will give us a kill. I simply walk into the store. There's a fine line between courage and stupidity, somehow I find time to encourage my silly team to tower dive and cross it, which I do so willingly. A simple strategy, always used inefficiently. When it pays off, we scream and rejoice, cause tower diving anyone is a risky choice. I'm a crazy panda in my head, I hear a voice, and it says to tower dive when it gives advice. Whispers in my ear telling me to be insane. Not hitting my boss, it'll be okay. But I can't do that, what if it's a bait? What if their jungler is setting up a gank? Don't be afraid, they aren't that smart. Look at them, they didn't even see me at the start. You can dive anybody, anyone you want. Who cares if your team ranges if you come short? All tower dive you. That tower will not save you. Please hit your blue pill. Or you will give me a kill. We'll tower dive you. That tower will not save you. Please hit your blue pill.